In this video, we will discuss the facial nerve lesions inside the skull before it comes out of the stylomastoid foramen and we will discuss its lesions at different level in its route. Two important nerves arise from facial nerve in its route between geniculate ganglion and stylomastoid foramen. Number one, nerve to stapedius muscle and then corda tympani nerve. Corda tympani arises from the facial nerve before it exits from the stylomastoid for a man. A lesion of the facial nerve before the origin of the corda tympani will produce loss of taste sensations in the anterior two-third of the tongue ipsilaterally. Posterior one-third taste supply is by the ninth cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve. In addition, it will produce same clinical features of facial palsy as produced by a lesion of the facial nerve outside the stylomastoid foramen, which we discussed in the other video, that it will cause unfrowing of the forehead, eye won't close, lower lid will sag, so tears will spill out, and a corner of the mouth droops, so saliva will dribble from corner of the mouth and food will collect between the teeth and lips. A lesion here will also produce loss of blinking reflex because motor arm that supplies orbicularis oculi muscle is also paralyzed so there will be a loss of blinking reflex too. The other defect at this level will be a parasympathetic loss where loss of parasympathetic activity of the sublingual and submandibular glands because it supplies them after relaying in the submandibular gland. Now next, facial nerve lesions before the origin of the nerve to stapedius. A lesion of the facial nerve before the origin of the nerve to stapedius in addition to facial palsy, taste defects and sublingual and submandibular gland dysfunction will also cause hyperacusis, deafness, tinnitus or dizziness. Why it causes hyperacusis? Nerve to the stapedius muscle, the first motor branch of the facial nerve. A of the facial nerve before the origin of the nerve to stapedius would cause a stapedius muscle paralysis. What's the function of a stapedius muscle? A stapedius muscle closes the oval window and that stabilizes the stapes bone so that prevents the loud sound from entering into the internal ear. When stapedius is paralyzed, oval window remains open so it causes hyperacusis and other features. Next is facial nerve lesions, inner before the geniculate ganglion. A lesion of the facial nerve inner before the geniculate ganglion in addition to facial palsy, taste defects, sublingual and submandibular gland dysfunction and hyperacusis will cause decreased lacrimation and dryness of the eye. Greater petrosal nerve, parasympathetic nerve that arises from geniculate ganglion, a branch of the facial nerve combines with the deep petrosal nerve which is a sympathetic nerve. Greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve. They combine to form the nerve of the pterygoid calon and then it relays in the pterygopalatine ganglion and supplies parasympathetic fibers to lacrimal gland and also fibers to nasal and palatine gland. So a lesion here will cause dryness of the eye that may lead to redness of the eye and corneal ulceration. So lacrimal pathway is from geniculate ganglion, greater petrosal nerve, pterygopalatine ganglion and the lacrimal gland. So next is the intrapontine lesion of the facial nerve. In addition to the paralysis of the face, it causes paralysis of the lateral rectus muscle. Why lateral rectus is paralyzed in facial nerve lesions? Lateral rectus is supplied by abducens nerve and facial nerve loops around the abducens nucleus. A lesion in the facial nerve will cause paralysis of the lateral rectus so eye won't move laterally. There may also be features of involvement of corticospinal and sensory tract. The difference between supra and infranuclear facial lesions we have already discussed in other videos. Diagnosis of Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy has an abrupt onset with pain behind the ear, loss of taste and hyperacusis. 80% of the patient recover in a few weeks to few months. The recovery is delayed because of the axonal degeneration. Acoustic neuroma, CP angle tumors, infarct, demyelinating lesions of multiple sclerosis and tumors are common lesions that interrupt facial nerve fibers. Which disorder cause insidious onset Bell's palsy? They are tumor like acoustic neuroma, 
carotid body tumor, cholestituma, and dermoid, which disorder may cause bilateral Bell's palsy. They are Lyme disease, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and sarcoidosis. Causative organism for Lyme disease is Borrelia burgdorferi, which disorder causes recurrent Bell's palsy. Melkerson rosenthal syndrome causes recurrent Bell's palsy. So in the investigation in blood, CBC and ESR for infection, CSF for infection, serology for Lyme disease and varicella zoster virus antibodies in Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, ALISA testing, MRI, EMG and endoneural fluid examination. So what's done in ALISA testing? In ALISA testing, anti-varicella zoster virus IgG and IgM antibody titers is done and for sarcoidosis, ACE inhibitors and X-ray chest. EMG shows evidence of denervation 10 days after the attack indicates that there has been axonal degeneration so recovery may take months and may be incomplete nerve conduction studies shows axonal degeneration that leads to delayed recovery and in the endoneural fluid test presence of herpes simplex virus type 1 dna in the endoneural fluid and posterior auricular muscle suggest reactivation of the virus in the geniculate ganglion mri mri may reveal swelling of the geniculate ganglion and facial nerve number two mri shows facial nerve swelling in idiopathic bell's palsy and number three they are very helpful in detecting cp angle tumors and facial nerve tumors